So Bloomberg. I don't know, man. This is blowing my mind. Because there's more than one game that you could be playing. Okay, this is the... What just happened? They're gatekeeping. Okay. Okay, so we found something, right? So, okay, into the metaverse. So where crypto and gaming and capitalism collide. So what we were just talking about was, uh, you know, crypto coins. And then someone suggested Blocktopia. So we went to Blocktopia. You can game, you can buy real estate on Blocktopia. Then I mentioned Axie Infinity. And I mentioned that people were quitting their job, but I kind of like discarded it. I just read it and I was like, oh, that was cool. Discarded it. People are quitting their job to play Axie Infinity. So... Uh, this is an article that I saw on Bloomberg Business Week. I sent it to some friends. I didn't even I didn't even look into it. So where crypto and gaming and capitalism collide, right? So you have um, from Manhattan to Malina, players are turning their backs on Wall Street careers and medical school to seek a fortune in the online arena. Uh, to understand why Zuckerberg thinks the metaverse is the next thing, uh, consider the case of Sam Purifoy. Sam Purifoy. The 27-year-old chemistry PhD from Columbia University left his job at Goldman Sachs at the height of the pandemic and is now seeking out his fortune by playing video games. Do you know how that, that changes the economy? Um, uh, so is this like movie ready player where one real life doesn't matter and it's all about the virtual world? Yes, it would be like so my understanding which is very limited it would be like if we made money well we if you ever played the sims or age of empires or i don't know fortnite right imagine you made money every time you killed someone in fortnite which is i shouldn't be saying that any every time you beat someone in fortnite or every time that you conquered someone in age of empires or every time that you got a good job in the sims and then you bought a house Imagine you were making money. Like, this is what's happening with Axie Infinity. So let's see what happens. So he has recruited dozens of people from Mexico and the Philippines to a guild that plays under the command Captain Purifoy. In exchange, he ponies up the funds needed to enter the game where players collect smooth love potion. So what this guy has done is he was a hedge fund manager, or he was a hedge fund employee. And he realized that the billionaire ponies up his capital and he makes all the geniuses do the work for him and make him money. So what this guy is doing is he's going from the U.S. to countries where the U.S. dollar is way stronger, like Philippines. Average person that I would pay when I had a Filipino assistant was like 2 to $4 an hour. But that's what professors make in university. So he's recruiting people. Um, he's recruiting people in the Philippines. And he's saying, play this game for me. I'll put up the capital. So I'm, I'm guessing you have to pay to play. Maybe you have to pay 200 bucks. They're not going to do that to play a video game, right? But he's, he's going to do it. So now you find a good gamer. And now he's like taking some of their money. But I don't understand how he can just take it. So what Purifoy... What Purifoy and his guild are now doing on Axie offers an early glimpse into the future. Not quite ready player one. Steven Spielberg, dystopian sci-fi. I'm going to have to watch that. Or even Snow Crash. The novel coined the term the metaverse. An online arena where decentralized finance or DeFi reigns. Fusing cryptocurrency, blockchain, and NFTs and video gaming. So yeah. This is the guy. So this guy here was a hedge fund manager. He's a PhD in chemistry. He worked for Goldman Sachs. As, 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 as high as you can get on a resume standpoint when it comes to finance. Quits his job to play video games. And he, he's hiring people in third world countries. Right? Where he can do arbitrage for the US dollar. He's hiring people in third world countries and paying them really well. And this is like, this is really... You can really change the game um, where I'm from. So... Uh, the world is full with dangers, though, from an altruistic investors and bankers that have profound disagreement on how cryptocurrencies will shake out in the end. That's like people who say it's going to zero. 
um, while Bitcoin and Ethereum and others are gaming, um, more Wall Street acceptance, larger universe is populated by an ever expanding number of new untested meme coins. So some question that they literally known as sh coins. The technical outages and sudden price shifts, there's no guarantee to the token. So like you could be earning axes and it just drops to zero. In the crypto world, it's also seen as a rite of passage to be scammed. Yeah, for sure. If you're in crypto long enough, you're going to get scammed. Um, the way the wealthy investors can stomach the risk, but could leave market participants, including the developing world, vulnerable. Yeah, because if you build a lifestyle off of Axie Infinity, you buy a house off of Axie Infinity in a car, and it crashes, you're you're done. You have to be really smart. So it's doing 2.5 billion dollars in trading volume. I mean, this is crazy. This is the game. This is the game here. What it looks like is it looks like little Pokemons running around and people are making $900 US a month off of this. So, yeah, this is crazy. So that's what I was talking about. You should watch the movie. So this is like the movie Ready Player One. I'm going to watch that Ready Player One. I'm going to have to watch that because I have no idea um, what's going on, but I'm willing to learn. And uh, that's how everyone, you know, should be, is willing to learn. So just a second. Just a second. All right, so let's go back. Axie Infinity. So we got to watch that. Ready Player One. Okay, so it's impossible to say how, exactly how many people are playing to earn, but all signs are pointing up. One marketer, the relationship between games and digital wallets, and those accounts people use to store crypto as of last March is about 51,000 daily active wallets are connected to the game. Um, according to DAP Radar, a firm that tracks data um, on decentralized finance, so DAP Radar... analytics um and i've been there before a firm that tracks data they're saying the figure has skyrocketed to 360,000. so games like actually show why tech titans are gravitating to the concept the metaverse is uh the metaverse and its possibilities have a potential uptrend not just how we work how we earn and spend the way we play plan and run our lives this is crazy. And then NFTs. So Axie's corner of the metaverse says primitive. The players must buy an NFT. So here you go. So to play the game, you have to buy an NFT called Axies before you can play. So the minimum is three Axies, which is $300 a piece. So you get to spend $900 just to play the game. You got to pay an Ethereum. Um, in other words, it takes a grand with no guarantee of success. That's crazy. So you got to pay them $1,000. Hmm. So you got Mark Cuban, Alexis O'Hanahan, the, the co-founder of Reddit, invested in Sky Mavis. <laughs> you got Justin Sun. Whew. And uh, Series B funding, 150 million. So these guys are basically going to be investing in all of the games that are similar to this. What's notable with NFTs and GameFi is that they aren't just digital files to look at. They do stuff. They interact with other NFTs. They appreciate over time. Imagine being able to earn money by playing Mario Kart. That seems indefigable. Nintendo spin-off series for the pre-internet Super Mario. You wouldn't have to be all that good. You just have to play it 24-7. This is crazy. 
Um, because your Mario is an NFT, it's impossible to duplicate, and you alone own this Mario. Because you own this Mario, your go-kart is always better and faster than the ones piloted by other familiar faces, like Mushroom, or Kingdom like Luigi, Toad, Princess Peach. So off you go, earning the kingdom's digital money. Mario coins, let's call them. Given the market economics, you might have to pay more for the NFT Mario than, say, the NFT Peach. But you'd also earn more. Because in the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario is the fastest player. When you step out of the game, back to your day job, you still earn, you still own Mario. When you start playing again, Mario is there, waiting for you, waiting for you to own Mario coins. You can sell the Mario coins to another player, if you like. If you've played Mario right, he might be worth more than when you bought him. Maybe you've demonstrated how lucrative Mario can be, and maybe more people want to play Mario Kart. Maybe Mario Coin has soared in value because everyone's talking about it on social media. So this in large in a nutshell is what GameFi evangelists are trying to build. Players can actually own items, and they can see that they are scarce, said Axie Infinity co-founder Alexander Leonard Larson. It is much more than real when you see someone wearing a Louis Vuitton bag on the street. Yeah, you can literally have no idea if this thing is real or not. True. You can buy a fake Louis bag and get scammed. So, just that doubt that you have fitting is fitting in the world because everything is so fake. So blockchain brings trust and it extends digital assets. I'm about to tell some people I know to, to, to play Axie Infinity. This is crazy. Um... So axes are NFTs. They're so expensive. So Purefoy Funds give scholarships for play, players, players, willing players around the world. He owns the NFT, and the guild members play them, earning the crypto. And he splits the winning with his players. So it seems like this guy is um, taking all the money to himself, and then he pays his players. And then he has like he's like taking a cut. He's taking a cut. So he puts up the money, he makes you do all the work, he does nothing. And then because you're a good gamer, but you couldn't afford the Axie Infinity NFTs, he's like, here's what, I don't know, 60% and I keep 40, or here's 40 and I keep 60. And then what do you do? You gotta keep making him money. Like, this is crazy. This is like, he's pimping them. He's pimping them. I don't even know if you're allowed to say that on YouTube. This is crazy. It's like it's like a broker in, in real estate, right? The broker has the license, and then all the realtors go make all this money, and then the broker just takes a cut of the realtor's money. This is what he's doing. Um, <laughs> so Carlos Enrique, so this guy, 24-year-old guy. Carlos Enrique Sierra Almaraz, 24 years old, discovered Axie this summer, and he says he dropped out of medical school in hopes to get rich. Imagine his parents. Whew. They wouldn't be happy. Play video games? That's not going over well. An African family? That's not going over well. Um, so Almaraz, who goes by the handle Steel Valkyries, is already moving up in the Axie economy. He's gone from blue collar to scholar, to white collar to moderator to mod. Wow. In addition to playing several hours a day, he handles various administrative tax. The captain is also a generous Axie capitalist. He splits his profits 50-50. So the other guy was doing 60-40. This guy apparently got a deal 50-50. Um, word, <clears throat> word is, greedier sponsors toss scholars immediately 10%. So imagine, this is like Emirate. <laughs> this is like Emirate. So... Um, he figures he pulled in $700 in September. Serious coin in Cuidad del Carmen. I'm guessing that's Mexico or like Dominican or something like that. Anyways, in Cuidad del Carmen, he's getting seven. So he's making more than his parents earned combined playing Axie Infinity. They still have gotten over his decision to drop out of med school, but he says he can't, they can't argue with the money. Can you do some research on the new project Soul Chicks? It's similar to Axie. Yes, absolutely. Soul Chicks. Tyson. Yo, what's going on? Yeah, you got the sinker bit from me, man. 
congratulations you're probably making some good money i would say um uh, upgrade your antenna and, and keep mining because uh helium prices at all-time highs and you got in at the right time so uh let me know how long it takes to to roi to, to get your money back let me know so we're just talking about axie infinity gaming online apparently it's better than helium you can make more money gaming than helium but the difference is you actually have to earn the money using your time with helium you just sit back you plug it in and you make money so this captain this guy made 700 dollars us in september playing axie infinity and he lives in koya dar Carmen. let's just look it up yeah mexico so he made seven hundred dollars so if you look at uh Kilo dark carmen jobs right we look at Kuya del carmen jobs mm. annual salary So the average salary in Cuyadad del Carmen, Mexico is 225,000 MXN per year. Okay. Yeah, so the average person in Mexico is making about $13,000 a year. Canadian, um, if you do US dollars, $11,000 a year. So he's making, yeah, he's making good money. Just playing games. Okay, so <clears throat> on Das Capitalist live stream Thursday night, the captain is rallying the crew. One member of the guild, Nornus Fordex, is about to become a father. Wow, dude, that's so cool. Pure fun exclaims. This is crazy. Like I said, this is crazy. Like, let's see. Uh, let's see. So the average salary in Uganda, right, is 69 million shillings. Um, So you're looking at 19,000 a year. That's average, but remember in stats, average is actually skewed. You want to look more at uh, median. So if you look at average salary, right, because the, the outliers boost everyone up. So the average salary in Uganda, for example, is uh, 18,000 US dollars per year. But the most typical salary would probably be the, you know, median, if we even look at net after taxes. You're looking at seven thousand dollars us right so seven thousand dollars us per year so if you're if you're playing axie infinity and you're making nine hundred dollars a month you don't have to do like these crazy jobs like you know cleaning cleaning toilets and like you know working 12 hour shifts and, and having to travel three hours to get to work and three hours to get back and then you don't see your family like you can be home in the comfort of your own home playing axie infinity and all these other online crypto games and then you have a miner up um and you're making you know maybe a thousand dollars a month two thousand dollars a month so this is um, an amazing opportunity uh for people to uh to make money and um i wasn't done that article So what else? Soul chicks. We got soul chicks. Phantasma chain. That's crazy. He's making bank. So phantasma chain. So look at that. I mean, that's crazy. He's making eight hundred dollars, and that's with his boss taking his money. So imagine once he um, <clears throat> buys his own account. And he stops, you know, having money taken out of his pocket by his boss. 
every time, so this is funny, every time that crypto creates a, a product where there's no middleman, where you can make, um, for example, Helium made a product, no middleman, right? You have a miner. You can make um, $1,000 a month with a miner. What happens? Emirate comes in, they put themselves as the middleman, they take 80% and they give you 20%. And then what do they do? They buy all the supply so that no one else can get miners, right? And then they just take all of the money. Axie Infinity, it's like you have to buy an Axie Infinity for, for 900 bucks to play. All these middlemen come in, right? And they take all the money and then they give people 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%. And then they just take all the money. Every time crypto has... Every time crypto has no middleman, someone comes in and inserts themselves as the middleman. It's crazy. Um, it's 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 crazy. Now, in some cases, it's good because people don't have the capital, but like they're taking advantage of people most of the time, and it, it's annoying, right? So um, you have to always be looking, and hopefully, as a as a group, we can find some other opportunities. So you know, what does he say? Later on a Sunday, night rolls around, clocks reads nine, Captain is back. He mentions that the founder of another crypto game recently tweeted that Axie sounds like a Ponzi scheme. Interesting. Um, Axie hasn't been accused of wrongdoings. Whatever, no one seems to care. I'm out earning my dad, another guy says. Uh, he thought I was stealing or doing fraud. Dude, that's hilarious. Poor Foy laughs. The conversation turns to a parental expectations, dead-end job, the banality of real-world life, 20-something metaverse view, um, hopes of generation lead to this, a Twitch live stream with a play-for-pay play game, which in med school dropout scores love potion. So he's st streaming on Twitch. Uh, the thing is, frankly, what does working at McDonald's do for you? Very seriously. Like, what skills are you putting on your resume? So... This guy is actually naive. Don't uh, don't trash McDonald's. Don't trash McDonald's. Don't trash Tim Hortons. Don't trash Burger King. They teach you tons of skills. Um, they start you at the bottom. You know, they start you at the bottom of the barrel, just mopping the floors. They teach you how to cut fries, whatever, and they they show you how to. You know, you have to be on time. You have to be well dressed. You have to to treat people right. You have to know customer service. So, uh, they shouldn't be trashing McDonald's, even though they're making more money than working there. But um i see the value of axie infinity now i see the value it's 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 great so um but mcdonald's needs to pay more right they need to pay more so like 20 bucks 30 bucks an hour is what they should be paying because they have less employees now they have all these um machines so back to the article so axie is just one realm of the growing cryptoverse where crypto blades let's look at that one um a virtual middle earth where players earn skill tokens by slaying monsters and then there's zed run the zed run where players own and race digital breed thoroughbreds mm, interesting i would like that um alluvium promises a journey across vast various landscapes so i'll, I'll look at alluvium so i l l U V I U M. And <clears throat> Des, I worked at McDonald's for seven years. Best place to learn life. Yeah, man, Des. Like, I worked at uh, I worked at Tim Hortons, and then I worked at Future Shop, which is now Best Buy, and just selling coffee. And you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Like how to deal with someone that hates you because they didn't drink a coffee. And you're 16 years old and you have to treat them nice even though they're treating you poorly. That works out well when you're in, you know, a boardroom and someone's like trying to to you know get you to say something crazy and you're like, yeah, let me chill. So yeah, it um it's definitely very valuable. So six nah, let me see. I could wish I could get McDonald's NFTs over here in Canada. That would be amazing. I made 20k off crypto blades when it popped off. Wow. They're working on another game, Zen Run. Yeah, I already wrote that down. Uh, I could see my mental health declining at McDonald's or Starbucks. Yes. The downside is every McDonald's and Starbucks and Tim Hortons or whatever is owned by an individual owner. 
that individual owner sets the tone of the organization. So if you work for someone who doesn't care about his employees, he doesn't care about how many people work, if there's supposed to be 10 people working and there's only three, yes, that can really hurt your mental health. But if it's a good team environment and you're just there to learn, right? You're not there to be there forever, hopefully. If you're there to learn, you want to learn the system. How do they make so much money? How do they do advertising? How do they treat their customers? How do they do sales? How do they do coupons? How do they do this? How do they do that? How do they do returns? You learn all these things. When you start your own business, you can apply some of those things that you learned. Um, so yeah, I mean, you got to work hard. So crypto tokens, as Axie players, as Axie has lured players, Axie Infinity Shards, interesting. Another token in the game has taken off, AXS, has soared from $3 to $136. That's a good ROI. <laughs> Such such upsize isn't lost on gamers particularly those developing in developing countries yeah chat rooms are full of stories on how axie helped someone get by during the pandemic or even through enough money to buy a home wow in philippines where axie has exploded um red bantilio has turned into the game turned the game has turned to the game after losing his job as a fitness trainer his wife quit her job as a nurse wow because she didn't feel safe and now they're playing axie like got nurses quitting their job because they're being mandated to do things they don't want to do they don't feel safe they don't feel protected and they're playing axie infinity and you got what soul chicks you got right you got soul chicks you got crypto blades you got zed run zen run what are the other games that you can earn money then you got alluvium put as many games in the chat <laughs> put as many games in the chat as you guys know um that we can we can research so i want the blessing from the other people so this is probably the best article in the history of crypto this article probably the best article in the history of crypto all crypto bitcoin everything um crypto evangelists will tell you that blessings rain down upon the faithful uh sharia singh the head of nft gaming at polygon says major game studios are watching he predicts this the transition to play to earn will be slow and difficult that's good we need it to be slow so we can make money um so they can't abandon what they know just to jump in on a new new entirely ship. They don't want to piss off the users. Countless hurdles loom. Game developers are trying to build the know your customer. Oh, brutal. They want to KYC you. Um, the capability A came to the bank. Yeah, because they want to make sure people aren't terrorists. Still. Still. So 10 or 20 30 years in the future all assets are going to be tokenized Osum predicts all equities and bonds are going to be digital asset platforms backed by crypto experiments today the virtual currency nick Nupiner is part of the experiment right now his company is putting out a game called crypto raiders crypto raiders the world of warcraft for nfts he calls it he has a team of 10 people. What? He has a team of about 10 people and 1,800 players. And they're initially sold as characters at $45 a pop. Within three months, those NFTs are fetching $680. I'm going to look at this is crazy. Soul Chicks. What? Six hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, so he's now thirty-one. He's the name head of growth, but the runway can lead to virtually worlds. Uh, blah, blah blah. The regulated economy of Second Life. Is it regulated? The pre-NFT online world that has been around since two thousand three is mostly for fun and not for profit. It's virtual currency. The Linden dollar is rock stable compared to the wild ups and down of crypto that's interesting um yeah there you have it there you have it is this is the greatest article i've ever read in crypto um there's a the title of it who is it written by 
Charlie Wells, I would find these people. And I would follow them on Twitter or whatever and just look at all articles that they're putting out. Charlie Wells and uh, Mizrella. <laughs> Egofu Pulo. Right? Okay, so there we go. This is how you make money on the metaverse. And um, unbelievable money right now, I would say. So I'm just going to check some things. Who's going to, you know, who, who after seeing this is going to uh, try to get into NFTs? Because this seems like a no-brainer. If you have any kind of spare time, any kind of spare time at all, you want to you wanna be looking at NFTs. So just for research purposes, I have... I have Blocktopia, the movie. I gotta watch the movie, Ready Player One. Um, I got a DAP Radar. So there's a website called DAP Radar where you do analytics. Then you have Soul Chicks as a game. You have Phantasma Chain. What is Phantasma Chain? A high speed blockchain. Uh, then you have Crypto Blades as a game. You have Zen Run. You have Alluvium. You have Crypto Raiders. And from that article, it said the NFT for Crypto Raiders was $680. Um, I wonder what the NFT is now. So. <laughs> Just Mizernia. She doesn't have a last name. That is interesting. That is interesting. So. Um, helium. Heliumly. Is that who it is? Soul Chicks? So Helium Lila wants me to look up Soul Chicks. 